In the winter of 2017, the rural community of Delphi, Indiana was brought into the public's eye. Two teenage girls were abducted and swiftly murdered nearby while walking on a city trail system. This case becomes viral, thrusting this quaint town of just under 3,000 people into an empty, fear-filled nightmare. How could someone murder these two kids like this? And who the hell is this child killer? Join us today as we discuss the Delphi double homicide case. I am Matt Sullivan, and welcome to Crime Dive. The city of Delphi, Indiana was established in 1828 as part of the expansion of the Wabash and Erie Canal system throughout the United States. In the same year, the Civic Council named Delphi as its seat in Carroll County. Covering 2.73 miles of area, the town boasts a populace of nearly 3,000 people, something that has changed very little in the last four decades. Its major exports are pork, grain, ethanol, and automotive parts. Its greatest claim belongs to that of the Indiana Packers Corporation, a pork processing plant centralized locally. The overall area is flat and expansive, consisting of fields and a robust trail system used for hiking called the Monon High Bridge Trail. The trails consist of one and a half miles of hiking paths through wooded areas along Deer Creek, a rushing waterway with a gravel bottom. Also near the trails is a large railway bridge once owned by the Monon Railway. It stands nearly 70 feet above Deer Creek and has become a sport to cross for some folks. Though the bridge is degrading rapidly, many still attempt to cross its dangerous planks as a feat of bravery. The once beloved area, its lush and soothing waters, and the trails of the Monon High Bridge systems are now tainted by the recent memory of a horrible day. February 13th, 2017, the day the earth stood still. Very scary situation right now, and I just, I just want to hold. Saying now they won't stop until those 13-year-olds are found. It's been nearly 24 hours, of course, since they were reported missing. 13-year-olds Liberty German, Abigail Williams, last seen around 1 o'clock Monday afternoon near the Monon High Bridge, that abandoned rail bridge just outside of Delphi. Well, breaking news from Carroll County. That police continue to search for two teenage girls who went missing early yesterday. You know, this is the entrance to the trail where those two 13-year-olds were last seen. Officers, law enforcement, they have stopped the search for the night. But in the meantime, other folks have come out. We've seen family. We just saw a group who didn't even know the girls come out here because they heard the story and wanted to come out. They're here with flashlights searching for them, doing anything they can. Yeah. The search started again yesterday afternoon. The two actually had the day off school yesterday, so they decided they wanted to have some fun, spend some time on the trail, and take some photographs. Remember, they were supposed to be picked up around 3 o'clock, but when that family member arrived, the girls were not here. They weren't answering their text messages or phone calls. We started going through all the social media things, you know, picking up, uh, you know, looking at Facebook. Has she talked to anybody, you know, or had the girls been talking with anybody? Uh, you know, Snapchatting or whatever the kids do today, back and forth, and uh, really didn't find anything. The last message I think we found going out was like at about 2:30, which was a like a Snapchat of a picture of them out there on this bridge on the trail system. And that was the last communication we've had. The hopes of these families would end up being dashed. Approximately 300 yards from the bridge they were last seen on, their bodies were discovered shortly after 12 p.m. on February 14, 2017, Valentine's Day. 
The crime scene was on the other side of a large hill and ravine near the shores of Deer Creek. It was described as bizarre and absolutely horrific to behold. Not much was revealed to the public by law enforcement. What was revealed was the source of their deaths. Homicide at the hands of a man last recorded on the very phone of the victim herself, Libby German. This pile of human excrement murdered these girls without causality. Beyond his obvious murderous impulses, he stole the lives from these beautiful and innocent girls. His arrogance did so in broad daylight, on a public trail with cameras, and with at least half a dozen potential witnesses. The autopsies were completed and the bodies formally identified on February 16, 2017, which led to a public outcry by Delphi locals who demanded justice. Quickly, it became apparent that the sheriff, Tobe Lesenby, needed to address the public to calm senses. So a press conference was issued on February 22, 2017, commencing the foothold of the investigation with the Indiana State Police. The initial sketch and images of the suspect were released with grainy audio of him ordering the girls down the hill. The suspect was initially described as a Caucasian male, aged 18 to 40 years old, with reddish brown hair, height 5 foot 6 to 5 foot 10, and weight between 180 and 200 pounds. He was seen wearing light denim jeans, a brown hoodie, a blue jacket, dark shoes or boots, wearing potentially a newsboy hat and a gray gaiter over his mouth. For the first two years, the victims' families and law enforcement held several press conferences that saw a significant draw by the Carroll County population, always demanding answers and promising justice. Throughout this time, hundreds of thousands of dollars in reward money was raised and offered, but to no avail. Law enforcement seemed to simply keep the facts of the case to themselves, sparking controversy and numerous family hate groups on Facebook. These groups spread the most egregious falsehoods about the victims, their families, and about the crime itself. Slowly, members of the victims' families began to withdraw from the public's eye on Facebook, and with good reason. These groups espoused trolls who made a point to slander and accuse people of the crime, even members of the victims' families themselves. Law enforcement didn't help any of this by refusing to publicly exonerate those whom they've investigated. This further sparked distrust and suspicions amongst the trolls. To make matters worse, the case was viral throughout the world. These bitter truths seemed to stunt the investigation. That is, until April 2019, when law enforcement announced a new direction. The Indiana State Police with several other law enforcement entities announced on April 19, 2019, that new information would be released to the public about the case and their investigation. Understand how rare it is for police to do this sort of thing, and why they might do this in the first place. Given the notice released to the public, it's my opinion that this press conference was given to the suspect himself and was not necessarily for the public at large. We were witnessing Delphi murder history unfolding before our very eyes. Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter masterfully addressed the crowd. And then, the killer himself. The real reason they were all here. Directly to the killer, who may be in this room. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. For more than two years, you never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. 
We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you. We know that this is about power to you. And you want to know what we know. And one day, you will. In addition to these things, the first sketch that was being used for two plus years up to this point was somehow made secondary to another sketch that seemed to defy what we knew about the suspect. The sketch was polarizing to say the least with the public. And I've been told by Becky Patty personally that she was left confused and angry that day that law enforcement waited to tell the families on the day of the press conference. To be honest, I don't blame her or anybody for thinking this way. What do police know that they're not telling even the families? It's now been four plus years, still no suspect, no info, and at this point, no damn resolve. Now I do realize that I was not involved in this case in the very beginning. In fact, I've only known about it since about February of 2020, right before COVID. And I admit that in the beginning, I was very critical of the Patties and of the case itself. But about seven months ago, through Facebook, Becky Patty reached out to me. And it was not in a nice way at that point. In fact, our very first communications were because of things that I had said about her family. But thank God she did, however, because quickly and lovingly, she and I mended the bridges that I had burned with her and her family. And my mission became advocating for the legacies of the victims and their families, the way we all should. And hopefully by my story, I can mend some of the damage that I and misinformed individuals like myself have caused this case. To be honest, deep down I knew that as much knowledge that I've obtained from the volatile groups as I have, that I would not be able to know things truly without experiencing it firsthand. So secretly, I booked a flight to North Carolina to meet up with my partner. We made a road trip of it and drove 10 plus hours to get into Indiana. It was absolutely incredible to step into Delphi and confront this case together for the first time. Our trip there opened our eyes to the many facts of this case, to mistakes, some hours, and I've not always been careful with the things I've said, but I promise to make things right with this, to debunk as much of the bullshit as I can. And to uphold and defend the legacies of Libby German and Abby Williams. These things should always be the center of our reasoning for being YouTubers involved with this case. And any case for that matter. To the families, I hope that we can get to see justice for your little girls. And to those in the groups who want to see this case through with me, let's work together to get there. Let's try to get along for the sake of the victims. Join us for part one of our trip to Delphi to break apart the case as we hunt for the killer of Libby German and Abby Williams.